I completely missed the fact that Agara released one of those ages ago. I don't know how that slipped my attention. Hey guys and welcome! In this video we're gonna cover the latest release from Agara, which is Agara FP1e. And I'm not 100% sure why we have this. Maybe it's an iteration for European market, because this is an iteration from the Agara FP1 Zigbee motion or presence detector sensor that uses microwave radar to detect that you're in a room. And that sensor, well, somehow slipped off my radar. I remember specifically the release of FP2, which was Wi-Fi based and did pretty awesome things, but the original FP1? Hmm, somehow I've missed it. Anyway, we're here now and it seems like only a couple of weeks since uh, Sonoff has released their own presence sensor and to me that felt like Agara has issued a response, which is Zigbee 3.0 and Matter compatible, providing you have an M3 hub presence sensor that, well, it uses millimeter uh, wave radar. Radar, 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 that's the one. So what's new? Rather than comparing this to the old sensor, I'm just going to lay out all the functions of this sensor and what I liked about it. First of all, this is quite expensive because you're going to pay for this nearly £50 in UK. Now in the description of the video, you should have a nice discount code, so you're going to save a couple of more quid. This is Zigbee 3.0 and as you can see, it has a long, probably one and a half meter cable attached to it uh, that you can use to connect to a USB charger. Now this advantage of that, that is that the cable is permanently attached, you can extend it if you want with extension, but I wish there would be an option to connect your own cable and, well, make it the size you want. Just like original sensor, it has the swivel base that you can modify and attach to pretty much anything thanks to the associated magnetic uh, plate that you can either screw in or glue into different surfaces. Just like all the Agara Presence sensors, this has ability to detect motion and presence. Now, it uses the microwave, so it will be pretty good at detecting that because it doesn't go off the temperature or average temperatures uh, within the range of the sensor, but it means that it might also trigger pets and micro movements, so bear that in mind. But what's new in this sensor, I don't remember reading anything on the internet about the first iteration, is that you will be able to act on triggers like presence still detected, and uh, and basically create your own different triggers when you are in a room but you remain motionless. For example, something like when you're reading, watching TV or sleeping. Enough of the theory, let's uh, pair it up and see what is it like in practice. Now I'm going to use it with Agara M3 Hub. I've covered that separately, it's going to be video in the corner, go check it out if you want. Now, the pairing process is super simple. Press the button at the back for five seconds and within a couple of moments you have it connected to your Agara hub. From there, it's up to you what you want to do it. You can keep it via Zigbee connection or you can expose it via matter to other ecosystems like Google or Alexa. Once paired, as far as the device card goes, there isn't really anything interesting because it will tell you a current status of the sensor, meaning that someone's present or someone isn't present, and that's pretty much it. If you go to the settings of this device, you'll be able to also adjust the range of the detection, so you can pick anything from 6 meters to 30 centimeters. In terms of how sensitive it is, it detects the presence of me in a room within a second or two, and it takes up to 20 seconds to detect the absence or report the absence back. So, And there are no settings to adjust this, so you'll have to bear on the baked in parameters into this sensor. Where it gets slightly interesting is when you go to automation panel and you use this as trigger because you actually have quite a rich selection of different triggers available and associated with FP1E. And those are, I'm just going to read them because it's easier. Presence, absence, presence for and absence for. And then we have when you're moving, when you are still, when you're moving for and when you are still for. 
it is nice to see the distinction between you moving or moving for selected periods of time or remaining still because that gave me idea to try different scenarios. So in my testing, I took Agara FP1E to my bedroom, located it near the bed and set up a couple of interesting scenarios. First, I wanted obviously the sensor to turn on my ceiling right, which is also from Agara. Check out the video in the corner if you want to see what I've done with it. And when I walk into the room, the main light fires up at 50% and kind of provides the illumination to the entire room. I've set the automation within a time frame as well, so it doesn't trigger during the day and also only applies when I'm moving around the room. As soon as the sensor detects that I'm being still there, but I'm still, for example, watching a movie, reading a book, or just playing with my tablet, it will turn off the main beam and use the ring light from the Agara ceiling light, instead creating a mood and allowing me to just relax and chill. Now, if at any point I decide to move again from the bed, it will enable the main light. And at night, because I've added extra time triggers, it will illuminate my room at 10%, allowing me to actually find the routes to bathroom without tripping over on whatever I've left on the floor. And at first I was slightly worried that me moving around the bed would trigger that automation at night and enable the main beam. However, I was able to utilize moving for a couple of seconds to actually trigger it out and provide a nice cushion that would protect my eyes in case I just want to change the position on bed. I had the sensor in my bedroom for a week and honestly, I, I think I'm just going to leave it there because it works pretty good and I like so far the integration with the ceiling light. Now, obviously you can be more creative than that, but that's pretty much all I wanted from this sensor. My next step was to kind of investigate what else I can do with it. When I finished playing with it, the curiosity got better of me and I decided to try to connect it to different ecosystems. I started with Alexa and connected this uh, via uh, Zigbee 3.0. And here's a slightly confusing story because no matter how many times I tried, I could see the device being detected by Alexa Zigbee Hub. However, uh, at no point I was able to find this device on the list of devices. I don't know what's going on. I think some tweaks in the firmware are required for, to make this work. My second try was with Tria Zigbee Hub, in which I was trying to connect uh, the Zigbee 3.0 protocol of this sensor to Tuya without any luck. Things weren't looking good, so my last try was to actually switch over to Nodred and Zigbee to MQTT. I have a SM Light coordinators, which I use right now to operate the Zigbee. They're really good. The video is in the corner there. And I've tried to connect the FP1E to these. Now, these paired instantly. They hadn't any problems, except this device is new and it's not supported just yet. I was trying to be cheeky and I went to uh, the settings for different converters and I found the original uh, FP1 sensor and I was trying to use that converter to use with FP1E. Unfortunately, they, that didn't work for me. As right now, I don't have that much time to play with it in Node-RED and unfortunately that has to wait for later. I'll leave that to the community to figure out and I have absolutely no doubt that in, in a couple of weeks this is going to be supported via Zigbee to MQTT. So if you're looking for a present sensor that is pretty good and you want to use it with uh, Zigbee to MQTT or similar, uh, then uh, you'll know you'll be able to pair it. So in short, FP1E, it's a pretty solid present sensor as long as you don't mind paying extra. Now, I know that the price is going to be a sticking point, but Agara devices are usually a little bit more expensive than competitors. However, they do offer nice build quality. And if you're looking for something extra, then take a look at FP2 sensor, which allows you to track multiple targets and define a areas around your room to trigger different automations. Maybe that will help you justify its price. So guys, if you're interested in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to this sensor and perhaps a decent discount code from Agara, but check it out soon because those codes get expired pretty quickly. As for now, I do not have any posting schedule, so if you want to know what's next, well, you know how YouTube works. There's no reason for me to explain this. There's a couple of links down below for my social media accounts. Consider following me there because this is how you get the most up-to-date information about what's going on with Not Enough Tech. As for now, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Take care. Bye. Right, it's time to take you back to the bedroom, because otherwise, 
sooner or later I'm going to hit something with my bare feet. Thank you.